so uh, we had a we have a curve x zero, uh, so smooth uh, uh, projective curve. Mm. Uh, and we also assume that it's uh, geometrically connected, which means that uh, it's equivalent to saying that the, if I take uh, global functions on this curve, so uh, then uh, it's, it's a lot of Q, uh, then uh, this space of global functions is FQ. If it's connected, but not geometrically connected, it would be a finite degree extension of FQ. So in the sense that my curve is, 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 is actually a curve or a larger field. So this condition is not, is not at all important for, uh, for rationality, or for, 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 but, but it's, uh, it's important for explicit formulas that you have some time. So and then we have the zeta function. Mm, and we prove that it's uh, rational. And uh, moreover, we, uh, we prove that it's, um, mm, it's a, mm, it has the following form, uh, a polynomial divided by um, mm, 1 over t minus 1 qt, where this polynomial f of t has, well, first of all, it's a polynomial with integer coefficients. And secondly, it has, uh, well, it has easy properties that this is equal to 1. And more interesting is that uh, f of 1, so the, um, the residue of this function at 1 uh, is equal to the order of the Picard group, pick 0 of the curve. We prove that it's finite. Uh, divided by, uh, let's see, uh, just this. Okay. Mm, very good. So that's that's this was the theorem, and um, mm, uh, uh, I want to kind of uh, 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 explain uh, the first uh, quarter of this lecture. I want to explain slightly different point of view on this on this argument so let me just sketch what 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 was the kind of uh, idea here what was the point the proof the main point so we have the zeta function uh, x0 t uh, and uh, so this is by definition product over all closed points uh, 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 1 over uh, 1 minus t to the degree and um, mm, so uh, we expand this in, as, uh, we represent this as a sum of geometric progression, uh, take the product, and then what we will get is uh, the following sum, uh, sum over all uh, uh, positive, non-negative integers, uh, t to the d. So what is the coefficient here? The, this coefficients, uh, so they are uh, C sub D. Mm, mm, okay, uh, C sub D uh, is the number of effective divisors divisors. Uh, of degree D. Right? So an effective divisor is a, uh, well, it's a, it's a combination of closed points. And its degree is equal to the sum of the coefficients with this multiplicity. So that's kind of topologically holds. And now uh, the main observation was that uh, you can use the riemann roch theorem uh, to compute this C of D. So, namely, uh, so if uh, 
for g large enough, uh, namely greater than 2g minus 2. So let's compute this number. Mm, so, well, first of all, uh, uh, every divisor gives rise to a line bundle of degree d. And now, uh, given a line bundle, uh, we can compute the number of effective divisors that correspond to this line bundle, which is nothing else but the well, effective divisors that correspond to a line bundle are in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, global sections of this line bundle up to scalar multiple. So what we'll get is a, uh, um, mm, uh, right, so uh, global sections up to scalar multiple. And so the key point was that when the degree is sufficiently large, the space of global sections of a line bundle of this degree depends only on d itself. It does not depend on, on the, nothing else, right? And therefore, the formula for, z of, uh, for c of d is the following. It's the order of the Picard group of the Picard, well, of the Picard set of line bundles of degree d on x0 times uh, the number of the well, global sections of a line bundle, any line bundle of this degree, up to scalar multiple. So this is the, just the number of points in the um, projective space uh, of dimension. So by riemann roch we can even compute this. Uh, so this is p um, d minus g. Uh, of uh, F. Mm -hmm. I hope I get it, uh, have it correctly. Yeah. So uh, and the now um, this number. This is a. Uh, this is the set is either empty or it's a. Reward it's either empty or a torsor. Well, a principal homogeneous space uh, uh, has this principal homogeneous space over peak zero, right? Uh, and we prove that in fact it's not empty. Uh, so, so the number of elements here is this, right? Uh, P to the d minus g f. Okay. So this was the kind of the key point of the argument. So once we have this, you look at this formula, you have some polynomial that corresponds to g less than this number. Right? That's kind of complicated, but it's a polynomial. It doesn't affect rationality. Plus, we have uh, this infinite sum. But essentially, you just count this is generating function for the number of points on the projective space of various dimensions. You can, that's, that amounts to some in geometric progression. You, you just compute the number here explicitly, right? That was the idea. This is, this is a constant. You can pull it out. Yeah. What, what remains is this. This depends on t. So, uh, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, now, uh, uh, as I said, I want to uh, rephrase this argument more geometrically. So this is a very nice formula. Uh, we have here two sort of varieties. We compute number of points, and I want to kind of see geometry behind this computation, explain geometry behind this computation. So uh, uh, to this end, let's 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 do it. Let's let's consider even more general setting. So let uh, so so I what I want to. Explain uh, is the title of my yeah. So this is Kapranov uh, uh, Mativik uh, zeta function. So 
Say it again. Yeah, yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Only discuss rationality. Okay, so what is the idea here? So, so it's a very nice, beautiful idea. Uh, so let's uh, take any uh, uh, quasi-projective variety. Uh, no, say over F. Uh, and then uh, what we can, we, uh, mm, uh, I want to uh, form what's, what's called the symmetric power of this. Oh, it's, a, it's an open uh, uh, subset in the projective array. So, uh, so what is the symmetric power of x0? Well, uh, so uh, this is uh, just uh, uh, the Cartesian power, right? So you take z copies. Uh, so, uh, and uh, so I look at the, this, this product, and I have action of the symmetry group that permutes the factors, and I want to take the quotient by the symmetry group. So uh, what, 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 uh, what this uh, expression stands for is, is what's called the categorical quotient. So let's, uh, let's denote this, uh, uh, this scheme by x0 to the d. And uh, so this scheme is defined by the universal property, by the functor it represents, right? So it, uh, I will tell you what are morphisms from uh, this guy. Uh, modula S D to any scheme Z. So, and what are the morphisms? Any guess, guesses here? So, who can propose a conjectural answer? What should be the morphism from a quotient of a variety by a group? Very good. So, uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, if I, uh, maybe I will, uh, um, I think uh, it's really visible. So I have uh, uh, my x zero to the dth power, and uh, so if I take the quotient, presumably I should have a map like this, uh, and uh, so given a map from this guy to any z should be the same as given a map uh, from, from, from this total space to Z, which is invariant with respect to the action of SD here, right? So I'll write it down. So this is morphisms from X0 uh, D to Z. Now, um, I... Uh, I think of this as a set with action of the symmetric group, and I take invariant elements here. Well, if you just think about sets with action of a finite group, what is the universal property of the set of orbits, of the quotient of a set by a finite group, well, any group? It has this property, obviously. So this motivates the definition. So this is really not, well, that's, this defines the functor this guy represents. So one has to prove that it's indeed the, uh, such, a, uh, such a quotient indeed exists. It's representable, right? And this is not, not, not difficult, uh, but this is where one has to use the assumption that x0 is quasi-projective. So uh, I will only sketch 
the argument. I will not write it down. So if x0 we are affine, then the construction of the quotient is the following. You take uh, just this uh, Cartesian. So, so if x0 is spectrum of some ring A, then this is uh, this tensor power of this ring A, spectrum of the dth tensor power of this ring A. And I can uh, take for the quotient to be the affine scheme, which is spectrum of invariant uh, elements in the dth tensor power of A. Yes, exactly. Uh, OK, uh, so uh, uh, this, this is a construction for a fine scheme. And if you want to do it in general, well, uh, you take this scheme and you cover it by a final open subschemes which are invariant with respect to the symmetric group. And the quasi projectivity is needed to construct such a cover. So the claim is that if you have any quasi projective variety, so if x0 is quasi projective, then this is also quasi projective. Then every point. Uh, has an open affine neighborhood which is invariant under your action. Yes, exactly. And this is this is I think equivalent to quasi projectivity. Uh, yeah. So 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 that's that's what is used here. So because uh, so you take a point x0, so you take a point here, you take its orbit by what Valody explained that exists in uh, a fine uh, open neighborhood that contains this orbit. This affine open neighborhood need not be invariant under the action of your group. But you can take uh, images of your open subset and intersect all these affine open neighborhoods uh, over the action of the group. Mm -hmm. Images. Very good. And then this way you construct an invariant open neighborhood. So I think uh, uh, it's OK for finite groups if it's not uh, reduced, say. Uh, uh, and Valodia, can you uh, uh, so, so, so and this is also true for, for reductive, right? Uh, so Ah, so, so this functor is not representable. Is not representable. Uh, right? Uh, uh, really? OK. Uh, hmm. Very good. So, uh, uh, so we have uh, now. Now let's uh, let's make the following. Yeah. So I need one more one. Uh, so, so let's let's take our scheme x zero over over f cube. Let's apply this construction and let's think for a second what are uh, points of this scheme over f cube. Let's compute this. What would be the natural guess, conjectures? How I want to express this in terms of points on x0 itself? Yes. Uh, so. Uh, this is a very good observation. So, so let's let's uh, uh, have in mind. Let's let's keep in mind this picture. So we have x 
uh, to the power x0 to the fifth power, and we have this ramified cover, finite ramified cover, uh, x0 uh, d over sd. So if you have a rational point, fq point here, you can try to lift it to a point here. But it could be a problem, right? Because uh, so, so uh, well, uh, it's easy to convince yourself that, uh, that uh, so, so maybe I will, I will write it down. It will be, uh, instead of saying it in words, so let's uh, uh, think of this as follows. So we take first, uh, let's consider first f q bar points of this guy. Well, for any scheme uh, over fq, so the set of fq bar points comes together with the action of the Galois group, right? And this set is Galois invariant, Galois invariant here, right? So uh, I can So this is fq bar over fq. And now, uh, uh, so uh, if I have an fq bar point, then uh, so one shows that you can lift it. Well, that this map is subjective. It requires a proof. We define this quotient by the universal property. So it requires an argument, which is, which is not difficult that this map is a finite cover, and geometric points, so points with values in any algebraically closed field of this quotient is precisely the quotient of the geometric points of this guy by the group. So, so this is uh, simply uh, um, S uh, D uh, of X uh, zero F Q bar. Right? So is it like a mixed No, in Goa theory. Well, it's kind of a little bit, uh, it's, there is something to prove. So a good reference for this is, uh, well, it's explained, for example, in Mumford's book on abelian variety. There is a discussion of how you define the quotient of a variety by, uh, by a finite group. So, uh, uh, so you, uh, so this is this is just this. So, points with values in algebraically closed fields are just orbits of points here by the action with respect to the group action. And now you take Galois invariants. And now we have to solve an exercise in set theory. And I will uh, give you the answer to this. Uh, well, so then the, the actually the exercise will be to prove this. <laughs> uh, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, okay. So here is how I want to think of this. This is uh, effective. Zero cycles uh, on x zero of degree z. So, and I will explain what it means. So, what is a zero cycle? It's like divisors uh, in uh, dimension one. So, it's just a, well, you take um, mm, free abelian group generated by closet points by reducible degree zero subvarieties. So z of uh, x zero, right? So in the case of course, it would be the group of divisors. And you take, so all um, mm, elements here, uh, uh, such that uh, AI uh, greater or equal than zero. Oh, sorry, a x maybe. Uh, a x greater or equal than zero, 
and uh, sum of uh, uh, a x times degree degree of x uh, is equal to z. That means that the degree of your degree of my zero cycle is z. That's the definition. So, um, mm, uh, okay. Uh, so that's that's the exercise that in set theory that I uh, well maybe. So so I just make one one comment. How you can to make it take actually an exercise in set theory. I want to uh, express this set in terms of uh, the set of f q bar points with the action of the Galois group. So recall that x zero, the set of closed points, is the same as an orbit, Galois orbit here. Right? So it's the quotient of x zero uh, f q bar modular Galois group. So, and if you use this, then the statement is formal. Well, namely, uh, so what we have here. Uh, so this is unordered d tuples of elements in this set, such that as an unordered tuple, it's invariant with respect to the Galois action. It means that not, well, you may have some, uh, uh, some, some uh, points here which are not F two points, which are defined over larger field, but they should come kind of uh, uh, then the tuple should contain the entire orbit of this point with respect to the Galois action. So I can think of represent this set well by a following picture. So we have some collection of points, points here. And they sort of permuted by the uh, Galois action, by the Frobenius, right? Uh, so, and then I have this. I may have many orbits, but if I have an unordered collection which is invariant, it means that I can break it interdisjoint union of such orbits. Does it make sense? And every orbit corresponds uh, to a closet point. So, so, so in this picture, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So my D is six. My order, so, so these dots correspond to represent points here. And so Frobenius is how the points are moved under the action of the Galois group. And these six points, viewed as an element of the symmetric power, as an ordered collection, is invariant under the Galois action. And if I have uh, mm, uh, a picture like this, so this corresponds to a closet point. This also corresponds to a closet point. This is point of degree four. This is point of degree two. And I just take this. That will be my zero cycle. Mm -hmm. I hope it's now. So that's very good. So uh, now let's go back to. Uh, so we made this. So, so let's remember this the result of this computation. And let's go back to zeta function. So uh, let's take. Let's consider uh, zeta function of uh, x zero. Uh, uh, and so what is it? It's by definition, it's a product over all closed points, uh, 1 minus 1 minus t to the degree. And if you use geometric progression formula and expand it into the cell, you get again the, uh, uh, an expression, as in the case of curves, CD times uh, 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 T to the dth power, uh, sum over all D greater or equal than 0, where uh, this uh, 
CD. So in the case of course, this were effective divisors, but now they will be zero cycles. So this is number of effective uh, zero cycles uh, of uh, degree degree d. So, and as we just proved, this number can be expressed as the number of points on certain algebraic variety, namely this. Yeah, so it's FQ. Uh, so, so previously, uh, we, uh, so, so we thought of kind of zeta function as a function that, uh, well, generating function for the number of points on the same variety. We keep variety at the same x0, but we look at the number of points of various finite extensions of my base field. But now we, we compute this number. We f keep the field fixed, but we change the variety. So, and of course, anyway. So, and this suggests an idea uh, so that, that maybe, uh, let's, okay, so what, what is, uh, what, uh, what does it have to do with motives? Well, uh, so mm, let's, um, let me give a definition. So let, let's take, uh, uh, so, so let's, let's, uh, uh, let me just, uh, uh, rewrite, uh, this formula here, uh, because I will. It, it motivates the definition that I will give. So FQ uh, 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 G to the D, and I will raise everything else. And uh, no, no, it's, uh, uh, remember that, uh, so if you take the logarithmic derivative of this guy, it's related to the number of points, but it's not kind of equal. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so if you take just usual, if you take the logarithmic derivative of this guy, you get the same somewhere. This number, the coefficients are going to be just the number of points on my variety over FQ to the end. OK. So uh, let's take any field now, OK? Uh, and let's take. Um, Mm. Any field, field, could be of characteristic zero, like uh, complex numbers. And let's take, uh, define uh, growth in D group. This is definition. So growth in D group of varieties over K. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, what is it? It's 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 a, the quotient um, mm, of free abelian group uh, generated by isomorphism classes of varieties. So just linear combinations of varieties. And uh, so you mod it out by one relation. Well, or one type of. So uh, uh, if I have uh, any variety x, uh, variety means uh, just a uh, reduced uh, scheme of finite type of field. And I have an open subset. Uh, this is open. Then the relation that I want is that the uh, class of x is equal to the class of u minus the class, plus the class of the complement. Right? So it's kind of additive. I force additivity. Right? So this is a, an enormous group. But uh, uh, what, however, uh, so homomorphism from this group to another group can be described quite well. It's kind of it's a it's 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 a it's a rule that what is what what, what does it mean to give a homomorphism from this quotient to a group 
say A. It means that you, it's a rule that assigns to every variety an element of A, say a number, such that it's additive in this sense. So, uh, okay, uh, now uh, this, is, this is a group, but in fact it has a ring structure. So the ring structure comes, uh, is, is, uh, uh, is defined by this form, by the formula, by the following formula. Uh, so if I, you want to multiply two classes, then you just uh, uh, look at the class of x1 times x2. Uh, well, uh, so if, you, if, k, if your k is not uh, perfect, or may even, okay, so if, uh, yeah, so, so if k has characteristic 0, this uh, has characteristic p, this need not be reduced. And I want to take the reduced Just to make sense of it, because my variety is always reduced. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, so that's, this defines a ring structure. Uh, and uh, now, uh, let's have this at the blackboard. And now I will give you a definition. So, uh, uh, so suppose I have uh, any quasi-projective variety, uh, projective uh, variety uh, over over k. Then, uh, uh, so it's a matrix zeta function. Uh, so, is the following is uh, is sum over all positive non-negative integers, well, you take this classes of the symmetric powers, mm, uh, x0, and multiply it by t to the t. And you think of this as a formal power series with coefficients in k group of varieties. Right? I hope it makes sense. So, uh, so, so, so suppose. Uh, let me give you two examples. So, uh, suppose you uh, suppose that k uh, is uh, 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 finite. Uh, then, uh, so uh, then we have a homomorphism uh, from growth and d group of varieties, say over FQ, to uh, growth and degree ring of varieties, uh, to uh, the ring of integers, which takes the class of a variety x0 to uh, uh, the number of points, right? And clearly, this relation is satisfied. Because if you have x and you have open subset, then the number of points here is equal to the sum of number of points on u and on the component. So it's well defined homomorphism. And it takes product to product. So, uh, and under this homomorphism, uh, this, this kind of, uh, so, so this, this defines a ring homomorphism, so I have a, get a homomorphism from from this, this ring of power series to, to just a power series with integer coefficients, and under this homomorphism, Mativik zeta function uh, goes to uh, uh, the usual zeta function, veil, veil zeta function. So, so in this sense, the Mativik zeta function is a refinement of, uh, uh, of the usual zeta function. Well, so uh, you can. Uh, 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 contemplate uh, another natural homomorphism from uh, another invariant of varieties, uh, additive invariant. Uh, so you can consider, for example, varieties over C and consider homomorphism from this guy to uh, integers, which takes uh, the class of X, uh, okay, to uh, the earlier characteristic of the topological space of x, c points, in classical topology. The earlier characteristic is the alternated sum of dimensions of homology with complex. 
And it also has this additivity property. It's a basic property of the Euler statistic. So it's well defined. Good. So, uh, uh, so you can uh, take this material zeta function for a complex algebraic variety and apply this homomorphism. You get a power series. Well, uh, so you can ask, for example, whether it's rational. What's it's something? Uh, it doesn't have a name. So. So uh, now, uh, 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 so there is a uh, theorem here. The theorem. Uh, so uh, suppose again I have x zero is a smooth uh, 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 proper curve. Uh, curve. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, over k, and I assume that uh, uh, it's geometrically connected. But again, this is a technical assumption. It's, uh, it's just in that the field of constant is k. Uh, so O x zero is k, uh, and maybe one, yeah. So uh, and then uh, the the important assumption, very important for the proof is that uh, it has a rational point. Then uh, uh, this uh, 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 then this material zeta function uh, is actually rational. Uh, so it's rational. Moreover, it uh, has a form f of t over. Yeah, one more notation here. Sorry. Um, so let me let me write this this here. So uh, uh, I want to. So this is notation. Uh, uh, so I will denote the class of a fine line by l. That's okay. So then uh, the formula here is one minus t, one minus uh, l uh, t. So note that under this homomorphism, this evaluation homomorphism, l goes to q. So I recover the formula that I have. Okay. Да, но гораздо, на вид гораздо сильнее, потому что кольцо Гордендика это нечто невероятное. Очень мало соотношений. Одно только вообще. Вот. Окей. Uh, okay. so, uh, конечно. Первый вопрос такой, что на самом деле характер из этой группы Гордендика это, наверное, логарифм из да? этой функции. Ну, потому что за функция она мультипликативна, она сумму переводит в произведение скорее. Uh, да. Uh, ну да, но uh, основной вопрос такой. А у нас вообще есть какие-то характеры в Z, кроме как комбинации uh, точек над uh, расширениями в Q? Нет, ну... Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, well, for example, uh, the Euler characteristic. So, so the question is whether uh, other uh, examples of homomorphisms from this growth in degree to Z. So, in fact, uh, later in this course, we will learn how to define Euler characteristic of a scheme over any field in such a way that over C, this would give me this topological Euler characteristic. So this Euler characteristic is another example. Uh, well, uh, oh, just a homology with complex support. OK. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, yes, uh, very good. So f of t is a polynomial. I haven't been thinking for the question. So it's, a, it's a, uh, just a polynomial uh, uh, with coefficients in uh, uh, growth and degroup of varieties. Mm, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so uh, notice that this 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 um, this element one minus t is invertible here. So I divide by invertible element. So so the precise meaning. Well, one has to be a little careful here. So this this ring is known to have zero divisors. So really, division is not well. But this is an invertible element. So I hope it's clear what it means. It means that if I take this guy and multiply by, by this uh, polynomial, I get a polynomial. No, да. Ну вот в общем. Ну в смысле что не очень понятно как делить на необратимый элемент. Результат деления не единственный. Но это обратим. Окей. Okay. So, uh, uh, so that's the statement. And uh, now let, let me give a proof. Uh, the proof is, uh, is the following. It uses a little bit more algebraic geometry than uh, so, so so I use uh, I, uh, then the first proof. So what I'll need is uh, uh, so the the very the, the most important fact about curves, algebraic curves over any field, is uh, well the most important construction is the Abel Jacobi map. That's what I'm going to use. So what is Abel Jacobi map? So I have uh, so proof. Uh, two objects. I have the symmetric power of d, of x0, sorry. Uh, and uh, so another variety that attached to a curve is a Picard group, Picard scheme of a curve. Right? What is a Picard scheme of a curve? So Picard scheme of a curve is a modular space of line bundles on this curve. Right? So what is a modular space of a line bundle? So you don't define this, uh, this uh, scheme by uh, equations. You define the functor it represents. Right? So, uh, so maybe here is a little digression. So, so I, have, uh, I have a point here. Yeah? So let's fix it. Uh, x0 in x0k. And uh, mm, so uh, instead of defining this by, by equations, I will tell you what are morphisms from uh, what the functor it represents. So uh, 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 x0 uh, 2 from s to this skin. And these are. Uh, 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 so, uh, line bundles, well, isomorphism classes uh, of line bundles uh, over uh, x0 times s with, together with a trivialization. Uh, over um, x zero small times s. So this uh, this trivialization is very important. Otherwise, your functor will not be representable. It does it will not it will not satisfy sh the shift property. Mm. So. Uh, and this functor is representable, and this is, uh, well, in the case of course, it's a result of Andre Weyli. In the case of uh, any uh, uh, normal uh, 
proper scheme. Uh, it's a result of growth and dick, so it's 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 represented. And uh, so uh, there is a map that's called the Abel Jacobi map, uh, which actually lands in the subscheme of this guy of line bundles of degree d. Okay, so instead of uh, well, this this formula tells me what are morphisms from any scheme to Picard. So in order to produce such a guy, I would need to I would need uh, I would have to uh, uh, produce a line bundle on the product of this and x zero, right? It would be kind of in order not to well it would make my annotations too complicated and maybe confusing. I will just explain how this maps like on the level of points. So if I have uh, a collection of points, uh, say uh, uh, y1, uh, uh, y2, yd, right? So this is a point, an ordered collection of points on x0. Uh, So I want to attach to it line bundle on x0. What can I do? How a collection of points gives rise to a line bundle? Well, it gives rise to a divisor, right? Effective divisor. So I just take uh, all of uh, um, sum of uh, yi. Mm-hmm. Uh, good. Yeah, so, so it's just for, for all closed points. Uh, so, so big D is uh, line bundles, classic model space of line bundles of degree D, which means that for every closed point, so you look at, uh, um, you look at uh, uh, line bundles here, such that for every closed point, uh, the restriction of my my line bundle to the fiber, yeah, of this to x zero over this closed point has degree. No, it doesn't because I uh, 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 so so again. So if you forget, so so uh, uh, it uh, it looks like, uh, for example, when S is a point, right? Then, uh, so this trivialization, well, amounts to trivialization of a line bundle over a point. And of course, every line bundle is trivial. And moreover, adding this trivialization does not do anything, right? Because if you choose another trivialization, you can construct an automorphism of your line bundle, just multiplication by a number that takes one trivialization to another. So if S is a point, then I, I can simply, uh, so, so, uh, K points of the Picard scheme is precisely the Picard group. But uh, when S is, is not a point, that's, that changes a lot. You kind of, you rigidify, you, you um, well, first of all, not, it's not no longer true that every line bundle is trivial on X0 times S. Yeah, yes, yes. So without this point, you can't even define a functor. And then you can descend. Yeah. So you can do this, but then k points is no longer the, pic the usual Picard group. Yeah. So 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 what 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 Stepan suggests is that. You can uh, you can find a fine angular extension such that x zero has a point. You can uh, use this point to define the Picard scheme. It will be defined. It will be a scheme of a larger field, but because it's functoriality, it will come together with the Galois action, with the descent data. Right? But uh, it's uh, uh, it's no longer true that. Uh, 
uh, that uh, 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 so so in this way so you can descend it and you get a scheme over base field over your k but its k points need not be the Picard, the usual Picard group of x0. So here is a basic example. Let's take a quadric. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 0 over real numbers, right? Right? So let's, uh, so th does this have a rational point? No, because sum of, posit of uh, squares of your numbers not be zero unless all numbers are zero. So uh, what happens if you, so this is my sort of x0. What happens if you take x0 tensor C? Now it has a rational point. And uh, namely, it's, it's going to be P1 over C. And what is the Picard scheme of P1? Well, you can imagine that it's a sort of, it's, there is a, what is a Picard group of P1 just? Z. So it's, uh, it's just given by degree. Uh, and uh, so there are no sort of parameters here, right? It's, it's discrete. So you can, uh, the, the Picard scheme of uh, 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 P1, uh, C, uh, is, uh, 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 is, is also Z. So as we discussed, though, the, 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 this, um, uh, so this uh, P1, if you think of this P1 as uh, the base change from X0, so there is an Galois action here, right, which comes from the Galois action here. So you have action of Z mod to Z here. So it means that the Z mod to Z should act here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, you can convince yourself that this action must be trivial, right? Because uh, it should take an effective divisor to an effective divisor. Uh, but so, so that means that this section is trivial. So that if you take invariant elements here, you just get the same z. So, but however, on this uh, quadric, you don't have a divisor of degree one. So it's uh, uh, it's not true that uh, uh, gala invariant line bundle here descends. To a line bundle on x0. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So anyway, so that's that's an important point. Uh, but uh, so this we have this Abel Jacobi map, and uh, so what are the uh, fibers of this Abel Jacobi uh, Abel Jacobi map? Uh, so let's let's think of what are the fibers. Uh, so fibers. Mm, Mm. Uh, okay, uh, now I will pick a class here. Uh, so we already discussed this. Uh, so what are the fibers? So we look at the effective divisors. This is effective divisors of degree D, which are rationally equivalent to L. Right? So what is the space of effective divisors? Yeah. Take any point. Well, I take, okay, so I take a, a point, say geometric point, L is a, is a line So I take a geometric point of this guy. And I'm asking what is the fiber of the Sabel Jacobi map over this L? Okay? So, uh, uh, so, so right, very good. So this is the this is a projective space of uh, H uh, zero of X zero L. Very good. So because if I have again, if I have any uh, global section, I can take its divisor. Think of this as an element here, and then the the corresponding line bundle will be there. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of yeah. Uh, yes. So, so uh, uh, very. This is a good point. Uh, and now, um, mm, uh, 
Mm. So the fibers uh, of this man, as we just learned, these are, uh, these are uh, 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 projective spaces. But now, uh, mm, and uh, uh, so uh, dimension of the fibers. We jump, right? Because uh, uh, definitely this this need not be constant. Look, kind of, it, uh, you can uh, say if you have a uh, uh, well a trivial line bundle of degree zero has one dimensional space of sections. If you have a non-trivial line bundle of degree zero, it definitely has no sections at all. So dimension may jump, but if the degree is great, uh, is uh, if if uh, uh, d is greater than this number 2g minus 2, then by riemann roch theorem, all the fibers uh, are projective spaces of the same dimension. Uh, so this is projective space of dimension uh, d minus g over k. Well, depends on that. So, uh, so at least, now again, so if my G is large enough, then this looks like a, a fiber bundle, yes. right? Because all the fibers are projective spaces of the same dimension. And in fact, it's true that this is a fiber bundle, but even more is true, it's a projectivization of a vector bundle. So, uh, moreover, uh, mm, uh, uh, so, so this uh, CD x0 is a uh, projectivization of a vector bundle uh, where uh, mm, where E is uh, uh, a vector bundle bundle. Over, uh, uh, over, over the Picard. Well, you can even uh, uh, guess what the line bundle is. You have uh, uh, we have um, uh, so. Um, well, uh, so this uh, this P car is a modular space of uh, line bundle. So in particular, there is a universal. So the identity map from the P car scheme to itself should correspond by the universal property to a line bundle on P car times x zero. So there should be universal by the universal property by the by the definition of the Picard scheme. There is a kind of a uh, there is a line bundle on this product. Uh, that sort of uh, it's universal. So so again, it corresponds to the identity. Mm -hmm. This is a modular space of line bundle. So so all together, all line bundles on X zero glue together to this big guy. And uh, so here I have projection to um, mm, uh, Picard. Uh, and uh, so with this notation, uh, E is just direct image of um, uh, L. So the fibers of the direct image are precisely the global sections of my line bundle corresponding to a point of the picard. Mm -hmm. Good. So that's a kind of a picture that we have over any field. It has uh, numerous applications to class field theory or uh, so, so uh, now, yeah. 
Da, da. da. Uh, okay. So now uh, with, uh, with this geometric input, we can uh, now easily prove the result. We can, um, mm, uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's finally, let's, let's give a proof. So I have a, a zeta function, my civic zeta function uh, uh, of x zero t. Uh, so what is it? It's, um, mm, uh, uh, well, so uh, it's, uh, sum over, so here I have degrees of s, or equal then to g minus 2, uh, something. This is s dx0. I don't know much about this. But this is a polynomial. And uh, now I have, uh, uh, yeah, so let me, uh, let me write subscript D here because I am interested in dependence in D. So plus uh, sum over all D greater than uh, 2G minus 2. And here I will have the class of the projective uh, bundle, projectivization of a vector bundle times t to the t. Okay? And that's, uh, that's almost the end. No, not, uh, I don't have, this is not the projective space yet. This is projectivization of a vector bundle over the Jacobian variety, over the PCAR. The total space, right. So, but now, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, da, da. So now I will use the following fact that if I have any x, any, any y, uh, any y, any vector bundle, and uh, then the class of the projectivization of the total space of the in the growth integral group is equal to the uh, uh, class of y times class of the projective space over a field. Well, what is it? It's a, a rank, a rank E minus 1, right? That's, uh, that's the identity that they will use. So why it holds? Well, it's definitely true when E is trivial. Because then the projectivization is just the product of the projective space and y. So if it's not trivial, well, it's locally trivial. So you can argue by induction. You pick a dense open subset in Y, U, where it's trivial. And uh, then um, this guy here is sum of the projectivization over this open subset and over this complement by the additive, additivity. So over an open subset in trivial, so we know this, and over the complement has a smaller dimension. Right? Lisa. So, so here is the picture. So we have y. We have, uh, so over, so we can kind of find the open subset over which E is trivial. Then we write, uh, so P of E then is also represented as, uh, disjoint union of an open subset, namely the pre-image of U and the pre-image of the closed, this closed subset. By the additivity, well, we reduce to the proof for U and for the complement. The complement has smaller dimension and over U my bundle is trivial. So now let's use this remark here. And what you'll have is, uh, okay, so I will not write, this is polynomial. This, that's, this is polynomial. And then uh, I have, uh, 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 okay, so then I have uh, the class of the Picard. Uh, 
uh, uh, x uh, zero uh, times uh, uh, well, let me. Uh, times uh, uh, class of the projective space. Um, this is d minus g. Uh, uh, okay, uh, times t to the t. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, sum is over d greater than 2g minus 2. Now, uh, remember that I want to prove rationality. Uh, so I want to prove that it's actually a what we want to show is that this sum is a polynomial divided by 1 minus t and 1 minus lt, where l is a class. So the only geometric input here is that uh, Picard, as a variety Picard of x0 is equal to Picard 0 of x0. And this is true because I have a point. So if I have a line bundle of degree 0, I can add to it a mul diff, uh, multiple of, of my point and get a line bundle of degree d. Right? So uh, therefore, I can erase this. And now this is a, uh, well, elementary algebra. So uh, maybe I will stop here. Uh, Uh, well, it could be zero, for example. This could be zero. Empty. If there is no point, uh, then, uh, well, at least. Uh, but in any case, it's periodic. Uh, so it's periodic. Uh, uh, well, um, uh, So, uh, uh, well, so the problem that I want to suggest, uh, I, I don't want to, so, so, so I think this is open. So is it true? Is the, uh, the statement uh, true? Uh, for um, um, if um, uh, if uh, x of uh, k is empty, uh, well, there are many things that one have to be very careful about. Uh, so uh, uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's true that it's uh, periodic, but first of all, one has to uh, uh, be. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, the one thing that may fail is that uh, this. Uh, uh, I'm afraid that this uh, this map, this Abel Jacobi map. Which, uh, which is, again, a practivization. This, the symmetric power is a practivization of a line bundle over, of a vector bundle over, uh, over the Picard scheme. So this is, this is crucial for the argument, because uh, what we used here is that, that the fact that this kind of locally, this map locally uh, in the, for the risky topology over this Picard scheme is a product, is trivial vibration. What may happen, yes, you can use kind of Gala descent and uh, uh, as, as you suggested, but you can even define this map. But uh, I'm afraid that in general, it will be a projective vibration whose fibers are projective spaces, but it will not be locally trivial. It will be locally trivial only after finding Gala extension. And in general, it will be what's called a severe Brouwer variety. So it's, it's, it might be uh, 
uh, uh, kind of related to some Azimai algebra. So, well, um, I don't know. So uh, uh, this is a very, 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 I think, very nice problem. Uh, most likely, I, I would say that the answer is yes. It's still rational. Uh, and you can use some kind of periodicity, but uh, some work has to be done here. И, ну, как мы это доказали с помощью сложного рассуждения с вычетами. С, а, ну, с, с таким, там был трюк. Да. да. То есть... Но это неверно, а, вообще говоря. Вот здесь вот, вот для, для этой... А, еще раз, если там не про а, а, многообразие думать, а просто про группы, да, то а, вот у этой а, конники пик 1 равен 0. На ней нету расслоения степени 1. Потому что если на конике есть расслоение степени 1, то там всегда есть точка. По теореме Риминорох. У этого расслоения есть сечение. По теореме Риминорох, если вы подставите расслоение степени 1, рот равен 0, получите, что у вас есть одномерное пространство, э, э, какое? двумерное пространство сечения. О, oh, yes, yes. Well, uh, to, to, uh, we use it to... Uh, 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 well, we use the fact that the class of this guy in the growth indie group is equal to the class of this guy times the projective space. Yeah, yeah. Then I don't know what to do. So, so just take a uh, take, take this uh, conic, right? It's uh, over an algebraically closed field. It's uh, it's p1. Is it true that uh, uh, its class? Uh, is equal to the class of P1? Probably not. Well, over a geometric closed field. They are, they, they, they are isomorphic to PN. But I don't know, well, we don't have good description. No, no, over the race field, but So, uh, okay, so my, uh, let's, let's stop here. Questions? So, so this is, uh, uh, well, uh, in fact, unfortunately, I haven't looked at original uh, uh, paper by Kapranov. I don't know whether it exists. So the reference for this, uh, for this massive zeta function, uh, is uh, a book um, by uh, Murstata. Uh, it's called Zeta Book. It's, uh, you can find it on his home uh, page, uh, Zeta book. If you type in Google, you will, you will find it. Uh, so, uh, 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 so kind of uh, the first draft of this book contained a mistake here. So he claimed that he proved this for, for any curve with no assumptions. Later, someone kind of pointed out that uh, really this, this, uh, um, th this assumption is necessary. For, for the proof, but still, uh, it's not clear whether it's, uh, uh, it's uh, for the result. And well, there is a kind of uh, cheap generalization. Uh, you you don't actually need a rational point. All you need is a cycle of degree one. You can, if you have a cycle of degree one, you can still define the Picard uh, scheme. You you have enough. You you sort. Regify the factor that classifies fine bundles, and, and everything goes through. So, for example, over a finite field, it's not true that any curve has a rational point, but it's still true, as we proved it, uh, every curve has a uh, degree one cycle. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. We will discuss it next, next uh, tomorrow, actually. So we will discuss function equations tomorrow, and then uh, well, I, will, I will think whether it's, uh, they can say, I, I don't know yet.
sum of uh, d plus uh, 2g minus d symmetric power maps uh, to canonical class. I mean, uh, the product of such devices is equal to canonical class. Mm. I don't know. So, uh, uh, for I also don't know, well, for example, uh, uh, I'm uh, almost sure if you, uh, so, so there was a conjecture of Caprana for maybe a question, I don't know how precisely he phrased it, that this zeta function is rational for any x0, not necessarily for curves. Uh, so this would be a fantastic result, but unfortunately it's false. This was uh, shown by uh, 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 Valerie Wunz together with collaborators. Uh, uh, so, uh, it's false for surfaces, but uh, I'm, I'm, I think uh, it must be the case that uh, earlier characteristic zeta function, right? The earlier characteristic zeta function is obtained by, from motivic zeta function by applying this homomorphism to formal power series over the earlier characteristic map, is, is rational for any x. А мы, э, ну мы как бы... Нет, ну, э, как бы, строго говоря, надо уже проявить какую-то аккуратность, чтобы его начать это рассуждение, потому что, значит, надо определить вот, это, вот этот объект. Вот, вот этот объект. Ну, хорошо, это первая будет проблема. Но я думаю, что это, эта проблема решаема. Более существенная проблема, что даже для больших D, когда все, когда вот это не пусто, и когда вот это не пусто, вот это будет рассвоение, у которого свои на свои над геометрическими точками будут проективными пространства, но свои над негеометрическими точками проективными пространствами уже не будут. Они будут формами проективного пространства. Да. Да. Сурективное отображение не обязано быть сурективным. Вот. Но в нашем случае оно сурективно как раз потому, что у нас локально тривиальное да. расслоение. Да, очень хорошее замечание. И вот э, из-за этого ты моя как бы... Да. да, дальше я бы тебя дослушал. Что ты сказал? Про формы. Если еще что-то хочешь. Нет, я больше ничего все. Спасибо. Если бы, да. А люди в общем больше никаких мотивных мер не знают про это. Никаких нет гипотез. Нет, нет, мотивные меры есть. Можно, например, над комплексными числами как группа многообразия порождена классами гладких компактов в Гаврасе. Понятно, да, ведь? А, а, значит, просто из-за разрешения особенностей стало что Вот. Ну, значит, можно взять, существует такой гомоморфизм определенный, вполне определенный, из К-группы градиентов многообразий, который каждому гладкому компактному многообразию составляет размерность его n где n фиксированный. Вот не надо брать эйлюрхатистику, а можно брать только n и гомологию. Вот. И оказывается, что это же не очевидно, да? То есть вот, вот, вот с одной стороны у вас группа порождена гладкими компактными многообразиями, но какие там соотношения между ними, так непонятно. Вот утверждается, что существует, ну, единственность очевидна, да? 
гомоморфизм. Значит, утверждается, что есть такой гомоморфизм, который класс гладкого компактного многообразия переводит в размерность энтых гомологии. Вот. Ну, а, а, корректность связана с гипотезами Вейля. Она следует из гипотезы Вейля. Да, 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 да. Вот. Значит, это, это пример еще одного гомморфизма, и тоже можно это изучать. Но, значит, я думаю, что для таких рациональность верна. Просто, ну, как бы, рациональность, наверное, надо какие-то еще соотношения вести, естественно, геометрические. Тогда рациональность будет верна. Наверное, она верна для К0 от категории мотива Как группа от многообразий, тогда отображается. Ну, я, 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 я не знаю, я просто не знаю доказательства Ванса, к сожалению. Но, но я думаю, что я думаю, что все-таки вот еще раз моя гипотеза, что для мотивов для каноля от мотивов от мотивов Воеводского, там, например, или даже мотива Гордендика, рациональность доказать можно. Там как бы каноль от многообразия отображается в каноле от мотивов. Но в каноле от мотивов как больше соотношений. Вот. Но, значит, доказательство это... Ну, там статьи Ларсена и Лунсани, по-моему, очень длинные, и там их много, но, значит, доказательство там на трех страничках, оно вот изложено в книжке значит, из этого бука. Очень хорошая, очень ясная книжка. Очень простая.